I'll call this meeting to order on uh, Monday, October 21st, 2019. I want to welcome everyone. Very glad to have with us uh, Pastor John Burney of the Cumberland Community Church at 3059 South Cobb Drive, who will come forward at this time and give us our invocation and also lead us in the place of flag. So would everyone please rise. Every bow our heads. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to come to do your will. Father, we ask for the blessings upon those who you have set apart that they might understand what you would have them to do. And be with them and guide them, Lord, in governing this community. That they might look to the hills from which cometh thy help, and that they might move forward in your word. Let your will be done in them, and let it be done in us, that we might be able to serve and to be served. Of course, in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag by the United States of America and to the republics for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And for those folks, 3059 South Cobb Drive, Cumberland Community Church, I'm sure if you're new to town and uh, want to make a change or just go by for a visit. I'm sure they'd love to have you. Thank you so much tonight for coming by and doing the invocation. Uh, agenda changes. Uh, we do not have any. Um, under three is the mayoral report. 2019-339 is a proclamation recognition from National Friends of the Library Week, October the 20th through the 26th. Miss um, Wilkinson, who uh, chairs the library committee, Miss Wilkinson, I think there may be some folks from the library here. They look like library people in the front row, so Miss Wilkinson. Yes, do you want me to read this first or re go down there and read it from there with them? You can read it here, okay. up here like we do, and then you can okay. take it down there and present it to them. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay, this is a, a proclamation by the mayor of the city of Smyrna for the National Friends of Library Week. Whereas, Friends of Smyrna Library raised money that enables our library to move from good to great, providing the resources for additional programming, much needed equipment, support for children's summer reading, and special events throughout the year. And whereas, the work of the Friends highlights on an ongoing basis, the fact that our library is the cornerstone of the community, providing opportunities for all to engage in the joy of lifelong learning and connect with the thoughts and ideas of others from ages past to the present. And whereas the friends understand the critical importance of well-funded libraries and advocate to ensure that our library gets the resources it needs to provide a wide variety of services to all ages, including access to print and electronic materials, along with expert assistance in research, readers' advisory, and children's services. And whereas the friends' gift or their, of their time and commitment to the library sets an example for all in how volunteerism leads to positive civic engagement and the betterment of our community. Now, therefore, I, A. Max Bacon, Mayor of the City of Smyrna, Georgia, do hereby proclaim October 20th through the 26th, 2019, as Friends of the Libraries Week in Smyrna, Georgia, and urge everyone to join the Friends of Smyrna Library and thank them for all they do to make our library and community so much better. Um. Mary, if you want to come up and bring your folks and introduce them. Mm -hmm. 
single file, boy, girl, boy, girl. That's funny. <laughs> Um, we have uh, the majority of our board here this evening. Uh, Charlie Standard is our board president. Gigi Walters is our treasurer and secretary. Um, Marvin Patterson is our uh, assistant chair. His wife, Ann, is, uh, Ann Borders Patterson, is our secretary as well. And then uh, we have Ellie Wolf, uh, Louisa Cohn, Marianne Marcioni, and Bill Marcioni. All of them uh, contribute in many ways, such as the art committee, membership, and other activities, and uh, they make my job so much better and make our library very strong, and I appreciate them every day. Thank you. May I do the landscape? Mary, do you want to say something? You want to? Oh, I'll say, uh, Charlie, did you want to say something about the friends? I think he prepared a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, on I'm, I'm, behalf of the friends, uh, we get uh, our recognition from Mary telling us about all the wonderful things that happen, especially with the children's programs. You know, uh, 150 children and 4,000 books were read, and that means they weren't doing this with their cell phones, which uh, is obviously a good thing. So, and I think also, I think you ought to recognize, you probably do, but this library is really a jewel. It's something that makes this community special. You know, this is a, what a, one of the better communities to live in, and I think the library goes a long ways toward uh, making that so. So, I mean, that's all I want. It's just a, gr a great thing, and we, we work hard, but we enjoy it. Yep. And, and let me just say this while y'all are up there, because uh, some people uh, will not remember all this uh, as we go through life. Um, one of the biggest assets that we have as a city is to have our own public library. And um, this place today would not be what it is today had it not been for our public library, and I'm gonna tell you why. When we started doing the downtown, there was nobody here that slept except me, so I'm telling you, here's the way it was. Uh, we were able to, to do what we did um, and to dedicate the library and the community center August the 3rd, 1991, because of the library. Uh, we didn't know whether or not our community was ready to endorse a community center, but we knew that they were 100% behind the library. We had about a 5,000 square foot library that was busted at the seams. So we figured this, and Gordon Mort might remember, he's maybe the only one. Um, they're not gonna say nothing about your mama, and they ain't gonna say nothing bad about the library. And that's the reason why we are here, and we appreciate all the folks that have given up their time. And I'll tell you this, the Friends of the Library has been strong for years and just continues to get strong. So. Thank y'all so much for the time that you've given back to your community. Uh, that's one thing that I would never give up and hope that in future leaders, because we've been approached a few times about going in with uh, the Cobb County Library, and, and it's not a bad thing, but we're, I think we do pretty good. But it's because of volunteers like yourself that give back to our community. So thank y'all very much. As a gift, y'all don't have to stay unless you just want to. Item four, um, land issues, zonings, and annexation. A, 2019-305, public hearing, zoning request, A19-012, rezoning from a neighborhood shopping to GC with conditions for use as a special event center. 1.84 acres, land lot 381, 652 Concord Road. Uh, Drew Ying, our? Close enough, earring. Um, will you please give us the background? Uh, unless I know the applicants here, so give us the background, Scott, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. <clears throat> For those of you that aren't familiar, this is the uh, former Crafty Hog uh, or Howard's before that. Uh, the proposed special event center is expected to average 60 events per year with an average of 175 people. 
Um, this has, spot has 105 parking spaces that uh, will not change that current use. PNZ, Planning Zoning Board, recommended approval by a vote of 6-0, and Community Development also recommends approval. And if the applicant will step forward, <clears throat> this is a public hearing. Is there anyone here that's in opposition to uh, or that would like to make any public comment concerning this uh, zoning change? Let the record show there is none. This is in Mrs. Blackman's district, Ms. Blackman. Thank you, Mayor. Hi, Mr. Eric, how are you? Good, thank you. Good. Well, I know about your product and what you do and um, you're a great chef and all that good stuff, but can you share with us and our audience as well and the council more information about your business? Uh, yeah, uh, specifically the new business. Uh, well, a little bit of background. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the audience. Um, uh, I've uh, been a Georgia resident for 35 years and an uh, uh, Atlanta chef for 27 years. Uh, I've owned my own catering business for almost 17 years now and also a full service restaurant for about five and a half. Uh, it's been a dream of mine uh, to be able to purchase commercial property, uh, to have the opportunity to open a special events facility uh, specifically geared towards Atlanta's uh, wedding market. Uh, I've been in the industry uh, for a really long time now and feel that um, it's a successful venture. Uh, it could be a successful venture for me. Um, I, uh, what I'm planning to offer is sort of a uh, value priced uh, driven uh, event facility uh, experience. Uh, the uh, Atlanta's uh, wedding market uh, generates over a billion dollars a year uh, to the local economy. It's a thriving uh, wedding market and uh, there is a, uh, I believe, a shortage uh, of event facilities in the city that are available. Uh, currently, people book facilities uh, uh, up to two years out uh, to be sure that they're able to have the space that they want for their event. Um, and uh, I'm very excited about it. Um, I also wanted to speak a little bit about the fact that um, I realized that there's uh, two other uh, uh, prominent event facilities in the city of Smyrna uh, that also happen to be uh, owned by the city of Smyrna. Um, and I also wanted to uh, uh, let the uh, council know that I feel that, um, that I would be able to enhance uh, the uh, sales and, and refer uh, sales to those two event facilities as well. Um, you know, all three of the facilities would be different sizes and I feel would uh, cater to different uh, clientele. Um, you know, one thing is that I feel that, uh, you know, a lot of times when somebody uh, does a wedding at a specific location, that they also feel that they want to do the rehearsal dinner uh, in the same uh, location as well. Um, so I feel that that would be a very easy uh, referral for me. Um, and also uh, uh, to be able to uh, refer uh, dates that I uh, currently would already, uh, would already be booked. Um, so I appreciate your consideration and uh, am a, a proud uh, property owner in the city of Smyrna. And uh, um, this is the, uh, a, a business that I hope to be able to uh, own for my entire life and to be able to pass down uh, to my children as well. Great. Well, I know that the council has more questions for you, but I'm going to ask Rusty if he'll come forward and kind of give us a little bit of more of the background here on this, and then we'll bring you back, okay? Good evening. Uh, I'll just give you a little bit more background on the property and the surrounding area, just to add to uh, what Chef Drew's uh, explained to you. Um, this property is located at 652 Concord Road. Um, it's on the south side of Concord Road um, near the intersection of uh, Old Concord. Uh, it's a former restaurant facility. Uh, Chef Drew is proposing to turn it into an events facility um, where they'll hold special events and parties and, and such. Uh, the requested rezoning is from neighborhood shopping to uh, general commercial. The Future, the future land use designation for the property is Community Activity Center. There is no need to change this uh, activity center. The requested zoning is a compatible zoning district. Um, if you look to the north, you have moderate density residential across Concord Road. Uh, to the east and south, our Community Activity Center. And then to the west, where the fire station is located, it's, it's got a future land use of public institutional. 
This is the existing survey of the property. Uh, the, the existing restaurant building will, will remain. Uh, I believe he's proposing to do some interior renovations and some exterior renovations, remove the sand pit and some of the uh, play areas um, that were at the front of the property. With this request, the full access drives on Smyrna Hill Drive and Concord Road will remain. The existing restaurant building will remain in its location. Um, there'll be front yard improvements. And then there's 105 parking spots that will remain. And as part of our recommendations, we're, we're recommending that they be restriped so they can be clearly seen. This is the subject property. And then you have your adjoining properties to give you some context. Uh, community development recommends approval with the following conditions. Number one, uh, the building's fire alarm system should be brought into compliance with local and state fire code requirements. Number two, a life safety plan shall be submitted to the city fire marshal uh, to determine occupancy load for the building and for the proposed use. Number three, the uh, parking lot shall be restriped uh, prior to the issuance of business license. Number four, um, inspection and analysis of the grease trap and kitchen hood may be required if cooking equipment is uh, maintained. Number five, uh, the grease trap shall be replaced with a 3,000 gallon grease trap. Number six, the applicant shall remove the non-conforming freestanding pole sign or bring that sign into compliance with the city's current sign ordinance. Uh, number seven, the applicant shall plant street trees along Concord Road for the length of the property frontage. Um, the trees shall be planted uh, with a minimum spacing of 40, 40 linear feet between trees. And finally, number eight, um, this is a recommendation from the city's planning and zoning board in their, their public hearing. Uh, they recommended adding some prohibited uses to the subject property due to it moving up to um, general commercial with more allowable uses. Um, so they want to prohibit, I'm not going to read all these, they're all in your agenda packet, but basically adult entertainment pack, uh, entertainment stores, um, anything really to do with automobile sales and cleaning and repair, billiard parlors, boat sales, um, drive-in theaters and drive-in restaurants, and uh, motor motorcycle sales, mobile home sales, different types of uses like that. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions if you if you guys have any. Rusty, you said that uh, the grease trap needs to be replaced? Yes, sir. And what is currently there? I, I believe it's a 1,500 gallon grease trap. Is that, yes. And you're requesting it be double that size? Our Infrastructure supervisor from Public Works reviewed the existing conditions out there and is request is requesting for the kitchen service and everything that goes along with it that the grease trap be increased to three thousand gallons. I, I'm 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 just curious because I I don't know. Uh, Engine Two Crafty Hog was the last restaurant, and they were required to upgrade to fifteen hundred. I mean, I assume I don't know and somebody. I'll let our public works director that, answer. That just seems question. like doubling it is. The code is. Come on, Frank, come on. To my knowledge, the environmental inspector, Paul Osborne, he went out and took a look at it. To my knowledge, the code, when they change hands, it has to be upgraded to conditions of 3,000 gallons, which is required now. And, and, and who requires that? The our ordinances do. Some were grandfathered in previous the mayor, but when it changes hands, I believe. Exactly. I mean, I'm not having any conversation with anybody about this, but that seems like going from 1,500 to 3,000. Seems like it. I, I, mean, I, I think the issue is based on the occupancy of the building when it changes from a restaurant with a defined seating area with specific number of seats versus a events facility that may have more occupancy and more um, kitchen use. Seems like a excessive. I'm just um, 
Can I ask a question, Mayor? I, I'm, I understand what you're saying. Has there been any discussion regarding the leaving this uh, grease trap in with the owner, new owner? As far as I know, Corky Powell took a look at it, and this was his recommendation. Was to it's it's simply it based on the exactly. ordinance, then. Okay. I, I mean, here's my way of looking at it. I guess we had a, a full time restaurant. And I realize that we, we've, the occupancy probably went up based on this, but we went from a six-day-a-week service to a one-two-day-a-week service, and you know we're probably taking on less grease than what we are now, uh, or what we were before. But um, that's, you know, if it's in the ordinance, I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, how often does the grease trap have to be emptied? I mean, you're talking about. Fifteen hundred to three thousand. I'm not sure of that, Max, but I can find out. But I'm wanting to say it's. Uh, I know EPD requires a grease separator at our place once a year. Ten grease uh, separator is once a year for us. I don't know it's about commercial. Every three months. Mm. I'm just curious. What's the what's the cost to replace uh, to fifteen hundred to a three thousand? $18,000. Well, this is obviously something I guess staff needs to, to work out. I don't, it, it, just from a layman, it, it seems like an awful big grease trap for somebody that's not going to have the same amount of business as previous restaurateur. And um, I mean, nobody said anything to me about it. It just sort of just jumped up at me. Okay. Let me see if there's anything else that jumps up at me. <laughs> I mean, it's the first time I've met this guy. He's not said anything to me about it. I'm just saying. Okay. Can I ask a question, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. So on the, um, it might be a question for a chef. So you have a, a certain head count that you expect to have in the building. Have you had a conversation with the fire marshal to have some sense if you're going to be able to have the capacity that, that you need to make it work? Currently, uh, currently in the process of trying to obtain a, a building permit to do the renovations that I'd like to do. Um, the uh, life safety plan uh, certainly came up in that conversation. Uh, I'm waiting on uh, the review notes and comments from the fire department at this time uh, to see what they, uh, uh, their comments uh, about uh, attaining a certificate of occupancy. Um, I, I felt like that, uh, that uh, Mr. Grubaugh was very uh, pleased with what he saw at the walkthrough. What, what, uh, what occupancy are you hoping for? Well, you know, it's a, it's a, there's a difference between the legal occupancy. Uh, you know, the, currently the legal occupancy of the building as it stands with the size that it is and the way that it was uh, drawn before with the Crafty Hog is 340 people. Uh, I would uh, never imagine that I would do events uh, of that size. I really think that, uh, that that's too large of a group for uh, the space. Um, you know, with, with a, a wedding scenario, uh, people like to have the flexibility to uh, do the ceremony on one side and then do the cocktail hour on the other side while the ceremony space is being turned into the reception uh, room. So. You know, with that many people, that I, I wouldn't be comfortable. Uh, I personally wouldn't recommend a, a client if they were interested in doing an, an event that big. I don't think that they'd be happy and comfortable. Um, I really uh, foresee probably the max uh, would be about 250, um, and that's to me really pushing it as far as the comfort of the space and uh, the comfort of the experience. Okay. And I would love to talk more about the grease trap if I have an opportunity. <laughs> yeah. The next question to Rusty. Procedurally, uh, if, if we approve this tonight um, and there was some opportunity for him to come back and ask for a variance, would that be the procedure? Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, if we get into the review of the plans and the analysis show that he doesn't need as big of a grease trap as 
what's required, then yes, he can formally come back and request a variance from that, I would assume. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and um, Rusty, do we know how long this building's been vacant? I wanna say just over a year or just under a year, it's more or less. The building fire alarm system shall be brought into compliance with local and state fire codes. Okay. All right, anyone have any other questions? All right, Ms. Blackburn. Thank you. Well, at this time, Mayor, I would like to make a motion to approve. Um, 2019305 zoning request of Z19 012 rezoning from NS to GC with conditions for use as a special event center. 1.84 acres, landlot 381, 652 Concord Road, and Drew Eric. Eric. Second. Motion and second to approve this uh, zoning request with uh, those stipulations noted. Any other questions, comments? All those in favor of the motion. This approves 6 zero. Thank you very much and good luck. Item B 2019-306, public hearing zoning request A19-013, rezoning from LI to RHR-PD for the development of 65-unit age-restricted senior living community. That says at 24.8 units per acre, that's correct. 2.62 acres, land lot 381, Smyrna Hill Drive, Press Creek Land Holdings. Applicant here? Yes. Okay. Uh, the background. Mr. Thank Ryan. you, Mayor. Um, many of you are already familiar with Presswick in the community. Uh, this proposed senior housing unit will be limited to persons age 62 and 62 years of age or older and would be rental units. Uh, the site plan provides for 61 total spaces. Uh, the site will be accessed from Smyrna Hill Drive via full access drive on the east side of the building. The planning zoning board unanimously approves 6-0 and community development also approves. This is in Ms. Blackburn's district, Ms. Blackburn. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask Rusty to please come forward and uh, give us more information, please. Uh, Presswick is requesting to rezone the property uh, from light industrial to residential high-rise plan unit uh, development for the development of 65 uh, uh, for a 65 unit independent senior housing development. Um, this is not an assisted living facility. These are independent um, units that will be occupied by um, person 62 uh, years of age or older. Um, the subject property is LI. Um, the adjoining uh, properties to the north and to the west are neighborhood shopping and then uh, to the south is uh, neighborhood shopping and general commercial and then to the east is uh, LI as well. With this request, the applicant is proposing to change the, the future land use plan from a community activity center to high rise density residential. This is the proposed site plan. As you can see, the, the building is pulled up to um, Smyrna Hill Drive and the parking is located at the rear of the site and we'll, we'll walk through the site. This is gonna be a four story building and uh, it'll move down uh, downhill as as it deals with topography as you move to the east. Um, they'll have the following minimum setbacks, a front setback of 12 feet, a side setback of 20, and a rear of 30. With this request, the uh, unit composition is 41 one-bedroom townhomes and 24 two-bedroom townhomes. Uh, with this proposed development, the applicant is also applying to um, a state program to address uh, 
housing affordability. It's a, it's a tax credit program. Um, with that, 11 units will be restricted to um, the people that can afford uh, approximately uh, housing at 50% of the area median income. 43 units will be at 60% of the area medium income and 11 units will be market rate. Um, there will be a full access drive at the, at, at the east end of the property next to the detention facility. And then there is an existing stream buffer that runs through the site. Uh, there is no encroachment into the un undisturbed area and no encroachment into the impervious surface area setback. This is the lo location of the um, stormwater detention facility. And then with this request, they're proposing eight um, parallel parking spaces along uh, Smyrna Hill Drive, along with a five-foot right-of-way dedication and a five-foot sidewalk. With this request, there is only one um, variance request and that's to reduce the front setback from 50 feet down to 12 feet to pull the building up to the road and locate the parking in the rear. This is the proposed building elevation and then pictures of the subject property and then adjoining properties. Community development recommends approval of the requested zoning from GC to residential high rise um, plan unit development at a density of 24.8 units per acre with following uh, conditions. Uh, standard conditions from section 1201 uh, dealing with number two, three, four, eight, 10, 16, and 17 don't apply to this development, but the remaining do, and those deal with the composition of the building, uh, number two, um, screening of the detention facility and making sure that it meets the, uh, a 10% reduction in a 100 year storm event. Number three, requiring the utilities to be underground. Number four, um, the developer shall be responsible for any traffic improvements deemed necessary by the city engineer. Number five, um, the entrance in the facility should ha have brick or stamp pavers. Uh, for a distance of 20 feet. Number six, no debris shall be buried on the common area. Number seven, they shall install decorative street lights. Number eight, um, the developer shall comply with the city's current tree ordinance. Number nine is all landscape plans shall be prepared by a, a Georgia registered landscape architect. And 10, all yards and common areas are to be sodded in landscape. In addition to those standard conditions, we are proposing some special conditions. Uh, number one uh, sets the setbacks that were requested on the site plan. Number 12 uh, requires the developer to meet all fire access requirements from the fire marshal. Number 13 requires the developer to be responsible for all water and sewer improvements deemed necessary by the public <coughs> works director. Uh, 14 requires the developer to meet uh, all the requirements of the stormwater management ordinance and any improvements deemed necessary by the city engineer. 15, um, the trash dumpster shall be screened appropriately and have a rubber tops. And 16, um, the use of low intensity type lighting shall be required for the parking area. 17, the zoning of the property shall be tied to the site plan submitted 18, um, the zoning of the property shall be tied to the building elevation submitted. And with that, I'll be ha happy to answer any questions for you. Um, before we open up, Rusty, I'm not sure if I ask it, that if there's anyone that want to make public comment, this is a public hearing uh, for this rezoning. Okay. Anybody got any questions for Rusty? I have one. Ms. Uh, Blustein. Yeah. 
building, an elevator? Yes, they'll have to meet all ADA requirements, and uh, I'd imagine that's going to require an elevator within this building to, to get people from the bottom floor to the top floor. Okay. You mentioned about the stream buffer. Where, where's that stream at? It's on the east side of the property. Um, if you can put the site plan back up. It, it's on that eastern boundary line. You see that straight line that goes. Um, and, and that's actually a stream. It's not. It's a blue line stream. Does that mean, what does that mean? It means it's a recognized waterway. I mean, it's the start of that stream. It's the headwaters for that stream. Is that a stream because there's uh, above it, there's water that drains off of it and goes into a ditch? I'm just curious. I've never. No, but the, I, I, there's no head wall reflected on that plan. It's showing okay. that water's coming from the north into that. It's just, it's the headwaters for the, the stream that go underneath uh, Smyrna Hill and go south. What you're saying is the state says it's a stream, the, so it's a stream. The state has their requirements for a stream. It doesn't always mean that it's going to have water in it all the time, but um, if it has rested vegetation, then um, then they classify it as a stream. Whether we like it or not. Yeah. Any other questions, Rusty? Um, I do. I, I thought I heard you say, mention townhome, but are these going to be flats, more of a... The, the, no, these the, just are par apartment units, so yeah, apartment yes, units. they'll okay. be... I think I thought I heard you say townhome, but maybe it was just a mistake. Okay. But it's so it's going to be like a flat. Um, everything, each unit will be on one level. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Rusty on the front uh, front setback variance. So the um, topography is a little challenging. Is that why? Right. We're getting a request for the front setback change. Yeah, and we're in staff. Um, Ask them the move the parking to the rear of the park of the property so it's screened by the building and all the other commercial property on the north side so you don't have parking between the building and in the uh in smyrna hill uh, one more time rusty explain to us about the um the, the breakdown i know it's frame buffer i'm over that um, um the uh, makeup of the citizens that can live there. You said 40%. It was a 40% rule. This yes. is affordable. This or is affordable assisted. to somebody making 50% of the area median income. So somebody that's making 50% of the area median income, which the last time I think we, we, the last census was $61,000 for the area of median income. Right. Um, so it would be affordable to them at 30% of whatever, um, whatever the, of that 50, per, uh, basically if it's $61,000, it's $30,000, 50%. And then they're going to have to be, it's going to have to be affordable to them at 30% of So if they make over $30,000, they could not qualify to live there, right? More or less. Well, I mean, yes. 31, whatever it is. Yeah. And then there's another percentage. There's another one for 60%. So it, so it seems like all but, all but 10%, if I read it right, right, the rest of it is unrestricted. So yes, I can live there regardless of how much money that I make. Right. I just wouldn't get any subsidy, subsidy, right? They'll do a better job of probably explaining that than I have. But yes, it's it's marketed to help subsidize people that aren't making okay. near as much as the as the area median income. All right, good deal. Any other questions, for Rusty? I, I have one, Rusty. I just want to ask this question, um, and I know we've talked about it, but I want to put it on the public record. I've got one instance of this tax credit property in. Um, in my district in Ward 1 with Galleria Manor, and there have been some some problems over the years um, with them keeping up the property and things like that. What, what kind of enforcement mechanisms do we have in place to make sure that the property is kept up, you know, even in years, not for the current owner, but, you know, if, if it's sold down the road or... Right. They will, um, they will ultimately... Some of this will overlap, but they will have to do third-party inspections of 20% of the 
units every year for the city of Smyrna. And that's due every time um, business license renewal comes around. So they'll have a party that'll do an inspection for the units and make sure everything is in compliance and they'll submit those inspections to the city. On top of that, which they may, they may have to do, for, they will have to do for the tax credit program through um, the Department of Community Affairs, is they'll have to submit inspections to them as well. Um, I don't know what their threshold requirements are, if they have to do all of them every year or if they have to do a certain percentage. Um, but yes, they will, they will have another set of inspections that they have to deal with with the state as well. Any other questions? Thank you, Rusty. I like the applicant. If you'll please step forward, I need to be sworn in, Scott. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, Chuck Young. I'm the owner of Prestwick Development Company. Also a Smyrna resident the past 11 years with my wife Kathy and our two kids uh, who are at uh, Griffin and Campbell. Thanks for the opportunity to present tonight. Uh, I could talk literally for an hour on this project. I will not, so don't worry about that. But I uh, just wanted to share a little bit. It's a $14 million project, 65 units. Rusty already did a great job going over some of the details of the plan. Uh, it is age restricted, 62 and older. There will be elevators in the building for sure. Uh, we've done handful of these all over uh, across Atlanta. They're highly amenitized. Uh, this is a, this project is a direct result of uh, the city's efforts on the Georgia Get community and Smyrna Charms, Smyrna Housing Group. And so uh, and, uh, I've been fortunate enough to participate in that as a resident. Uh, so excited to be able to implement some of that vision uh, here with the city uh, should it be approved tonight. Uh, also exciting that the, uh, I believe it's the future Landy's point of the, sorry, the comp plan shows for some uh, density at this intersection of South Cobb uh, and, uh, and Concord and this node, and this could be a really exciting first piece of all that. Uh, we do green buildings. We're on, uh, it'll be Earthcraft certified. Amenities include wellness rooms, business centers, community gardens, community rooms, onsite laundry, fitness room. Uh, we do preventive health care, excuse me, preventative health care screenings for residents. Uh, healthy education programs, as far as you know, you want to quit smoking, things like that. We're we're, we're there to help. Uh, we do fun stuff for the celebrations, movie nights, exercise classes, uh, all that. Uh, we agree with every one of the staff recommendations, and uh, think it would make for a great project. And happy to answer any questions you have of me and Presswick on our project. Chuck, thanks for being here. Great project. I think I'm so glad that it's you know, part of the whole gig program and the Smyrna Charms. And of course, it fits right in line with sustainability because you are a green community and I, I really appreciate that. One of the things that I was thinking about is you're right across the street from Sparkles. So have you given any thought to that whole situation with that business being right across the street from this development? Um, possibly any disturbances, things like that. Uh, as somebody that frequents Sparkles, I hope to have some seniors go over there and do some roller skating. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's no, uh, you know, the seniors do like to get out. I think it could actually be kind of a, kind of a fun thing. Uh, I don't, I don't see any disturbances. We're over there a lot. I think, it, I think it could be great. It could be part of their activities. Absolutely. Okay. I, I, I've never seen you at Sparkles. <laughs> do you, do you go on one time? Well, we, I go during council meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Mr. Mayor, nice. I have a question. Um, there was some discussion in our um, in our work session regarding the, the 62 years of age, um, and, and I guess the concern is that um, let's assume I'm 62, not quite, but um, I'm 62 years old, and um, I move into the facility. And suddenly, I have two grandchildren that move in with me. Is that permitted? Is it not permitted? What's the uh, what's the ruling? That I guess there to keep keep this as a senior sixty two plus community. Sure, sixty two and older communities are. It's not permitted to have any children living on site. 
period. Well, they're not permitted. They're then. not permitted. Okay. I'm assuming if you go to Sparkles, you must have a child in elementary school then. Uh, sure. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, uh, I do. We've had plenty of fundraisers there for Nickajack Elementary. So. There is one with the question that Councilmember Welch just asked, but in, in a situation where <coughs> that 62-year-old may become the guardian for a child or children, how, how are you going to figure out that balance? How's that going to work? Is there going to be any type of rules set in regards to that? So every year they do have to recertify with income and you know, proof of age and everything else. And so if they have, they have to have children living with them, you know, they'll have to locate in a community. A lot of the 55 and older communities would allow uh, for kids with 62 and older, you can't have children living on the property. So we, we they... would certainly help them find a new place to stay. And we have 55 and older properties that we could talk to them about uh, relocating to, but they could not stay at this one if it was 62 and older. I'm sorry, how, how often do you say they have to recertify their? Annually. Annually, okay. So annually, that's the, that's the mechanism how it would be identified if somebody under 62 is living there. Yeah, and we have, so property management, of course, I mean, 65 units is not a very large community, so there's basically one point in and out of the building, so we have plenty of staff on site that that would be recognized fairly early, so it wouldn't even, that's when you would, you know, technically see the problem, but you would, if you'd pick up within a week or two of something right. Right. going on for sure. So Hello. your company plans to own this property for at least how many years? 30 years. Is, is that the, that's the length of the financing? Yes. So um, Chuck, thank you for coming tonight. And um, I have a question. Uh, just about, uh, I guess, a week and a half ago, I received a call where um, one of the uh, tenants of an apartment complex in Ward 5 was having to move because her rent was going up $200 more a month. Um, is there any um, priority given or any um, um, opportunities for people that are, are li already living here in Smyrna to be able to um, move into the complex from when because that's what we're facing in some of our apartments now so sure and, and one of the reasons I'm excited about this one in particular is because I know we hear the story a lot through some of the you know good community presentations and things so uh, when we uh, when we are under construction there will be signage up and ways for folks to sign up for uh, an apartment while it's under construction and then certainly we can make sure through social media outlets and things that folks are aware of the opportunities so they can absolutely get on the wait list to go ahead and move in. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there's such a huge demand for these things. They can, so how many is on your wait list now? <laughs> 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 so that, uh, my point is, so, if they're getting on the wait list, it might not be. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, we'll, 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 we'll start it probably about three, four months before we open uh, okay. the wait list. But, and, and certainly that, that would be great is, you know, the folks that are, that are being pushed out by some of the properties that don't have to limit their income and their rents that we'd have that opportunity for them to be here. Okay, I'll uh, let them know. I would defer to our legal counsel that if, can we, it, I, I would think it'd be difficult for us to put anything in there to, with their financing, but could something like that be done? It, well, I mean, it sounds to me like the concern's already addressed. I mean, and for practical purposes, right? You've got, I mean, you've got a land use restriction, right, that you're yes. gonna have to have which is filed in the courthouse and deed records. And then you've got uh, requirements, f financial requirements, yeah. right? And then you will have the zoning stipulation. So, I mean, we've covered it. I think that issue is covered about as well as it can be covered. Uh, well, my question was, though, was Ms. Wilkinson's issue with giving Smyrna, current Smyrna residents first option or uh, somewhere in the pecking order where they'd get a yeah, I don't. I think that's dangerous to try to tie that to a to a rezoning. I mean, I think just the market will be what it is as far as as. Um, I mean, these people will by definition will be Smyrna residents once they live there, right? And so the idea of uh, giving local people preferential treatment, requiring him to give that, I just I don't. That seems like just a mess to me. 
Uh, I just don't want there to be any misunderstanding that you know that we're adding something that we that, that we can't and ought not, and get ourselves in trouble or mislead the public that oh yeah, we, you get you get first right, you know. But at the same time, I mean, what you're what I hear you saying is that the Smyrna residents will have the same existing residents that will have the same opportunity as anybody else. That's correct, and practically speaking, they'll they'll see it before anyone else will. Yeah. Uh, we don't typically have to go out and market this widely to places outside of the communities that we're building in. It does. The majority of the residents are are from the local community. Okay, thank you. I just you know I'm just interested in making sure we're addressing the issues in our community when uh, people are having to move out of the apartments that are here in our community and because of the rents. But anyway, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I could, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, uh, the next question I was going to say, what is your anticipated um, you know, construction time and, and opening time? So we'll apply for our financing. Uh, you can do that once a year. Uh, and we'll find out about a year from now uh, if we have the financing or not. And so we'll call it first quarter of the following year. Uh, we'll be under construction. About 18 months? Yes, sir. Have you purchased the property yet? We have not. Do you have it under contract pending approval of the financing? Yes. Okay. Could you run through the um, income um, requirements relative to what somebody would pay? So for the 50% of the <coughs> average income level and such and such? Sure. So the ones that have restrictions on them, uh, you're, the rents are between $650 a month and about 985 a month. And then the 11 units that are not restricted, they will go for whatever market uh, gets for those units. What, what kind of income would somebody have to qualify? And it's, it's adjusted by household size. So if it's a senior that's single versus a senior couple, uh, it can range anywhere from uh, a single person household will range somewhere just over 30, like Rusty said, and a two person household can get closer up to 50 plus. Uh, and then if they're going to one bedroom versus a two bedroom, uh, their rent would fall within that, that range that I described earlier. Good, thank you. Any other questions? I'm sorry, what, at, um, Chuck, when did you say? 18 months? 18 months from now, 18 so months. Okay. construction, yes. Okay, any other questions? All right, with that, Mayor, I would like to propose item 4B for approval, 2019-306, Zoning request Z19-013, rezoning from LI to RHR-PD for the development of a 65-unit age-restricted senior living community at 24.8 units per acre, 2.62 acres, landlot 381, Smyrna Hill Drive, Prestwick Land Holdings, LLC. Second. Motion a second. Is there any discussion? Um, I, I just want to say this. I, I, I'm just looking forward to this, but it does concern me that it, it might be two years before you get your finance and before y'all even get started on this project. Um, okay. Just a comment. All right. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion. Six zero. Item C under uh, land issues only and annexation 2019-364 public hearing approval of subdivision plat with variances for lot area and front setback 0 0.46 acres land lot 378 2900 2930 South Cobb Drive 2900 South Cobb Drive LLC see applicant here um, okay um, I'm going to get Scott Andrews to give the background, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this property is currently plotted as one 
on the records officially. However, the commercial retail center and the out parcel are addressed separately. Um, this property is already developed and functions as two separate uses, each having independent access drives and required parking spaces. So, Mayor, in all attempts, this is basically a little housekeeping to formally record the lot as a two lot configuration. All right. Uh, the applicants here, uh, if you please step forward. This is a public hearing. Is anyone here that's in opposition to or that would like to make any public comment concerning this uh, approval of this subdivision plat? Variance. At the record show, there is none. This is in Ms. Wilkinson's district, Ms. Wilkinson. Thank you. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask Rusty um, Martin to come tell us about the. This. All right. Um, this is a plat approval with a couple variances um, for 2900 South Cobb Drive. Um, the PNZ board heard this uh, request at their last meeting on uh, October 14th. They recommended approval by a vote of 5 0. Um, the total property for 2900 is uh, approximately 4.3 acres. Um, there is a shopping center along with an out parcel with a Smoothie King. Um, with this request, we are formalizing the Smoothie King out parcel. It is currently reflected on the tax records and has its own tax ID number um, on Smyrna GIS, Cobb GIS. It's reflected as its own uh, parcel, but there is not a formal uh, subdivision or plat showing that it's been formally subdivided. So that's why we're here today. There will be no change in the zoning district, so it'll remain GC. Um, here's a survey of the subject property. Um, yes, we're talking about the little out parcel on the southeast corner of the site. Um, the minimum setbacks for GC are front 50, side 10, and a rear 30. Uh, with this uh, requested subdivision, they're proposing for two variances. One, to reduce the front setback from 50 feet to 40 feet. Um, the existing building for the Smoothie King um, encroaches in the front setback by 10 feet. And then they're re requesting a reduction of the minimum lot area from today's standard, which is one acre down to approximately a half acre. This is a picture of the subject sites. So you got your Smoothie King in the upper left hand corner and then the uh, retail center in the lower right hand. And then some adjacent properties and a view down uh, South Cobb Drive. Community development has re reviewed this request. Um, it, as Mr. Andrews stated, it functions as its own separate lot, has its own access, um, its own parking for uh, the subject use. Uh, community development is recommending approval and formalization of the of the subdivision into two formal <clears throat> lots of record. With that I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions, Mr. Morn? Thank you, Rusty. Mr. Sams. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Members of the council. For the record, my name is Garvis Sams of the Law firm of Sam's Lark and Huff and, and Bally, and um, just like Chuck, I could I could talk for hours on just about anything, but I won't. Um, we do have staff's recommendation for approval on this, um, and Planning Commission's unanimous recommendation for approval. Uh, Mr. Martin did a good job of of teeing it up for you. This this um, particular shopping center, if you're familiar with it, for for a long time it had Napa that was in there, but now that's been replaced. We have four suites. Uh, in the, uh, the overall shopping center itself. There's three tenants, so there's some available space that is there. Uh, the, the Smoothie King uh, itself, I didn't know this until, until last week, is, is the highest volume Smoothie King in the metropolitan Atlanta area. Um, I don't usually buy $8 milkshakes and, and, and that sort of thing, so I've not been there, but everybody else it seemed like in the city of Smyrna has. Um, my clients have owned this property. Uh, it's Mr. Pridgen and his corporate entity, 2900 South Cobb Drive, since 2002. And they've run it well. Uh, they've utilized it uh, appropriately. Three years ago, the Smoothie King came in as a tenant, uh, a, a build suit type circumstance following the Smoothie King. 
uh, prototype. They've operated very successfully there for, for three years. Um, as was mentioned, this is two separate two separate parcels in terms of the of the tax commissioners um, looking at it. But um, in essence, um, as, as Mr. Andrews said, this is, this is a housekeeping. I, but I, I don't want to I don't want to um, relegate it to something of non-importance because it does have two concurrent variances, one of which uh, we, we think is rather minor in terms of the, the as-built setback. Uh, the other one that we have sounds major, but but if you think about it, it it's not. Typically, your GC classification uh, requires a, a minimum of 20,000 square feet. But in the South Cobb Commercial Court or Design um, District, uh, it's a full acre that's required. And that's interesting because the entirety of our shopping center is only 45,000 square feet. And, um, of course, this has been here for some time. So it's really not... Considering what GC typically requires, this thing is properly zoned. Uh, it, it's not as drastic of a of a, of a variance as, as it may seem. Um, plus, when you look at variances, you're looking number one at hardship. We think the the configuration uh, of this property and its positioning, uh, coupled with the the fact that this is not going to set an adverse precedent, or we think impair the purpose and spirit of the ordinance. So we we think it's appropriate for those two for those two concurrent easements. As a part of the, um, the handout that you've got, you'll see the last pages are uh, a reciprocal easement agreement that, that I have prepared in which Smoothie King, the purchaser, assuming this happens, um, and of course, 2900 South Cobb Drive. Uh, they wanna make sure that there are provisions regarding interior maneuverability and accessibility, um, both with respect to pedestrians and with respect to vehicular connections between the two parcels. Uh, as Mr. Martin mentioned, Smoothie King in and of itself has its own requisite parking. In fact, it, it way exceeds uh, the parking uh, that's required. So we're not asking for any parking ratio um, waiver at all. The Planning Commission recommended approval. We haven't heard of any opposition. We've notified everyone in Ms. Wilkinson's district as, as per the, the regulations in terms of, of those who either have contiguity or adjacency to this. I've not I've not received any phone calls. I'm not sure if Ms. Wilkinson had, but I've not heard of any. And staff, I don't think, has received any. So we would simply ask that you um, follow your planning commission and your staff's uh, recommendation for approval. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions of Mr. Sams at this time? Yeah. Very brief, very concise. Great job. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. Thank you. Leave it alone. I don't hear that often. Thank you. Thank you. Well, at this time, I'd like to move to approve item 4C, 2019-364, approval of subdivision plat with variances for lot area and front setback, uh, 0.46 acres, land lot 378, uh, 2900 and 2930 South Cobb Drive, and then it, 29. 100 South Cobb Drive, LLC. Motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion. It's approved 6 0. You still have time to go get a smoothie. <laughs> Thank you, Garth. Thank you. Item D, Ordinance 2019 20 public hearing approval of ordinance 2019-20 for code amendments to the city of smart zoning ordinance appendix a article 4 section 402 article 7 section 712 714 716 and 720 to include wineries as permitted use in the general commercial light industrial central business district and mixed use zoning district um, I would assume that the city is the sponsor on this, so can you give us the background? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the summary of this is wineries weren't previously defined within the city, and the city's zoning ordinance is uh, silent on it. Uh, community development has worked to define that. So the city has recently updated the zoning ordinance to include breweries and distilleries, so this is falling in line with that to define wineries. Uh, wineries fall under a separate classification according to state of Georgia code. Uh, community development is proposing a code amendment to the zoning ordinance to identify the zoning districts where wineries can be permitted. This was uh, re 
recommended approval by planning and zoning, and of course, community development also approves. This is a uh, public hearing. Is there anyone here that's in opposition to or that like to make any public comment concerning this uh, uh, ordinance code amendment? Let the record show there is none. This is Mr. Tim Go, Mr. Go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Russ, you did mind sharing just a little information about this very interesting change to our ordinance? Uh, yes, uh, and I'll be real quick. Scott ha handled the summary very well. Uh, basically, staff has been working with a winery to locate here in the city of Smyrna. Um, our code is silent on it, so we need to include it to the list of permitted uses within certain zoning districts. Um, and that's what we're proposing here today. Um, we're basically proposing to add the definitions to clarify what a winery is. And as, as you can see, they're, they're identified up there in the different types of wine and what definition of a, of a wine is. And then we are proposing to add wineries to the list of permitted uses for gen general commercial zoning district, light industrial uh, zoning district, uh, central business district and mixed use um right now that that's what we're proposing because a year ago we made the the recommendations to add breweries and distilleries in those districts as well so um and you may be asking why are we allowing them in cbd or mixed use and that's because you do have these craft brewers winers and finters and in a in, dist in distillers that make, you know, stuff that's not made for wholesale distribution, but for just general package sales. So it fits within those districts. They're at a, they're at a, they're at a much smaller scale. And we have a, somebody who's interested in opening up a mead winery, if that's the term for it. Yes, we do. And they are looking at a location over on, um, over on Jonkle Drive, he's here. If y'all have any questions about um, wineries and, and what he does with his business, but um, this is the first amendment. I have another item on tonight to deal with the, the licensing requirements under the alcoholic beverage ordinance. Any questions for Rusty? Thank you, Rusty. I wouldn't mind uh, having the applicant uh, come up if. Uh, if he doesn't mind. Well, to see the, see the applicant? No, but no. that's just the, right. Robin's here. Yep. Scott. Hello. Uh, my name is Robin Kosoris. I'm one of the owners of the Viking Alchemist Meadery. Uh, that's a DBA, by the, by the way. Our actual name is uh, Arcane Adventures, LLC. What would you like to know? Do you have a, you, you do have a similar business somewhere else? Uh, we're currently operating in Marietta. We have uh, 1,500 square feet, which uh, we thought was going to be more than enough. Uh, we were wrong. And uh, we've been operating, we, well, we rented the place in January of uh, 2015. Uh, it took all year to get licensed, so we actually opened for business in March of 2016. And we've been operating there since. It's a production winery, officially. Uh, we make uh, mead, honey wine, as well as cider. Uh, we strive to use uh, local or you know, strictly Georgia products. All the honey we purchase from Georgia, uh, all of the uh, uh, apple juice for our cider is from uh, Mercy Orchards, actually, in Georgia. So uh, <clears throat> as much as possible for, uh, uh, really, for good business reasons, as well as uh, uh, being Georgia-centric, I guess, uh, we try to stay as close to home as possible for our ingredients. Um, we have uh, uh, seen revenue growth of uh, approximately 60% year over year, which is why we have desperately been looking for a new home for the last over a year. And uh, we found it here. Uh, it was 4,800 4, square feet uh, in a building on John Quill Drive. So. Great. Good. Thanks for thinking of Smyrna. Well, the funny thing about it is that I, uh, I wasn't thinking of Smyrna. 
Uh, I looked at a couple of places here, and the uh, prices were rather breathtaking, so I thought, no, oh, I'm not going to be able to touch that because of the stadium and all the things going on here. So I was looking at Marietta and North, and the property just came to us. Somebody stopped by the meadery and uh, found that we were looking for a place and mentioned they knew something, and uh, considering everything I went through uh, trying to find a place and uh, all the uh, lack of success we're having, this just went bang, bang. So I mean, perhaps it's cosmic, but uh, uh, it's, it's falling into place, especially uh, the uh, trouble I'm causing Rusty with uh, uh, showing up to ask for a winery license, and there wasn't any. And then he's got to uh, put in zoning ordinances and alcohol ordinances, and we're a farm winery, so I just thought I'd kick him with that one too. Uh, so I think I've probably, uh, probably made his life as difficult as I possibly can. And I apologize well, for that. I'll, I just mentioned tonight. I mean, I'm excited about y'all um, starting your business here. Uh, I think it's going to be great. We want this to be a smooth um, transition from the very beginning to the end. As a matter of fact, I just might just track your whole deal uh, to see how quick we can get this so, so, I can, so we can get more wine in our city. So I, I appreciate that. I, I guess we're the first craft alcohol business coming to Smyrna. So. Yeah. Uh, Good deal. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank so, you. So, uh, just you? what what is your timeline? Uh, um, I, I should tell you that we're a small company that's growing uh, fast. I'm running to keep up. Is what it comes down to. Uh, we have way overgrown the space that we're in for our production. So, our plan is, is to get license. We <coughs> excuse me. We have a federal license. We we need a city in order to go get the state. Right. Right. Right, so I'm hoping to have all of that in place by the end of the year and be able to move our production. So I've actually been working with Anthony uh, Carter, I believe it is, your building mm -hmm. inspector, to kind of phase one would be to just get our production moved over in the back part of the space for production and then start to work on the uh, plans to upgrade the space as a tasting room. Uh, we do tasting and uh, pouring package sales, all the various things you'd expect to see in a craft alcohol. Um, so we're trying to work out the, the phase in. I want to move from where we're at uh, in January. I would like to be able to soft open in February and have our uh, fourth anniversary at the end of March here. So that's what I would like. And, and, and where on Jonquil Drive is the building? Uh, as you're heading down Jonquil, you know, you've got Rev Coffee. And right. Mm -hmm. So you go down, you hit a stop sign, uh, and then you keep going. Uh, and then there's uh, a small industrial park. Right. So you've got the first building that's got the uh, uh, gym, the, what is that? Uh, CrossFit, that's what it is. And then the next building over, okay. uh, that's where uh, Robert's uh, fire suppressor, yeah. Ruben Roberts right. uh, owns right. the place. So. Uh, so the next building over, and uh, uh, a huge parking lot, great location. Uh, it's, it's just really nice for what we do. Yep. Good. Right. And what was the name of the company again? I didn't hear it. Oh, I'm sorry. The name, of the, the official name of the company is Arcanum Ventures LLC, uh, but we do business as the Viking Alchemist Meadery. V Say that again. Viking what? The Viking Alchemist Meadery. It, it's a cool name. It's right. like the horns and the hat. We do have a hat with horns on it. Yes. Any other questions? Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. So hearing no other questions, I move to approve um, item 4D ORD 2019-20, approval of ordinance 2019-20 for code amendments to the City of Smyrna Zoning Ordinance, Appendix A, Article 4, Section 402, and Article 7, Section 712, 714, 716, 720, to include wineries as permitted uses in general commercial, light industrial, central business districts, and mixed use zoning districts. A motion second to approve uh, this uh, ordinance amendment. Vote amendment. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion. Approve six zero. Thank you very much. Item E. Ordinance uh, 2019-22, public hearing approval of 2019-22, 
for code amendments to the City of Smyrna Zoning Ordinance, Appendix A, Article 5, Sections 501 and 503, pertaining to fencing requirements. Uh, the background, Mr. Andrews. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you covered a great deal of the background there, but this focuses primarily on uh, the, the finished side of the fence and which way it faces. In summary, so the current fencing requirements do not address which way the fence should face. So this will define that. Planning and zoning uh, approve this. Uh, Community Development has reviewed the city ordinance with respect to fencing is proposing code amendments to create a new fencing section and to eliminate the fencing requirements from section 501. Um, maybe Rusty will get into a little bit of the three provisions there and that is the background, sir. All right, this is, <clears throat> this is a public hearing. Is anyone here in opposition to or they would like to make any public comment concerning this code amendment to our city of Smyrna zoning ordinance. If the record show there is none, again, this is Mr. Tim Goo, Mr. Goo. Thank you, Rusty. Would you mind filling right. us in on some details? No problem. I'll, I'll work through this pretty quick. Uh, as uh, Scott stated, um, the city's fencing requirements aren't consolidated in one section. They're found throughout the ordinance. So you got to look in different um, articles and chapters to, f to find those requirements. Um, there's the, the definition is found in section 402 and then the, the side yard provisions for fencing and, and street side, uh, requirements are all found in section 501. Our proposal is to consolidate all those requirements into one section where the citizen can find it and easily understand what's required of them with respect to fencing. And then finally, um, we heard while we were going through this uh, amendment a year ago um, that we wanted to, that the citizens and council wanted us to address the finish side of a, of a fence and determine what that is. Um, so we've, we've proposed some, some wording for that and we provided um, some pictorial representations of what that code means. So the first amendment is to remove the side yard requirements for fencing from section 501 and we'll move this wording down to uh, section 503 here in a second. So the next proposal is to create um, section 503 under article uh, 5 and the first requirement is uh, and this is already an established requirement is no fence shall be more than eight feet in height or be constructed in a public right of way. Um, section 503A.2 states all, in all cases, the finished side of a fence shall be, shall face adjoining properties and or public rights away. For public purposes, or for purposes of this section, the finished side shall be defined as the side of the fence that contains no visible support structures unless approved by the community development director. And that's to address any, um, decorative fences that may have a horizontal um, support or maybe a two-sided fence. Um, it's just to give give the director discretion to approve those fences without having to formally become, come before mayor and council. And then we provide um, examples of what we mean by the finished side of the fence. And then other examples of what we mean as far as the unfinished side of a fence. And then finally, um, Section 503A is the wording from Section 501, which deals with um, fencing on a corner lot um, within any front yard, and it, in parentheses it said front yard shall also include a corner lot in which both yards abutting a street shall be deemed the front yard. In all zoning districts, no chain link or similar woven wire fence shall be permitted. However, within a front yard in an aforementioned district, a decorative ornamental rail, split rail, picket, opaque, basket weave, or similar fence constructive wooden or vinyl materials may be permitted, provided the said fence does not exceed four feet in height. Columns comprised of brick, stone, or similar material may be placed between uh, fence section, sections in the front yard, but still cannot exceed four feet in height. Decorative wrought iron 
or black aluminum fencing shall also be permitted provided the said fence does not exceed four feet in height. Um, so this, this is dealing with the part of the yard from the front face of the house to the public right of way. You're allowed a four foot fence or if you're on a corner lot, the side of the house to the, to the public right of way is a four foot requirement. And then everything behind the house is allowed to be an up to an eight foot fence. Um, and then also with this, we're proposing some examples of what we mean by decorative fence. This is not all inclusive. This is just examples um, to show you um, sort of what we're, the intent is supposed to be. With that, I'll be happy to answer any questions. I think fences are one of the things that probably take a lot of your time to figure this in details, but it does impact a lot of people and everybody has an opinion. Yeah, I mean, fencing is an issue because we don't require the issuance of a permit for it, but we do have code requirements that set limitations on the fencing. So um, unless an, a resident calls us and asks us what those requirements are, a lot of times they, they may not meet them or they may be in violation of them. So yes, we do spend so, quite a bit of time with code enforcement issues trying to correct those types of issues. Or even just creating the ordinance and updating it and doing it right. And right. right. So hope, you know, we'll create an info sheet with this that we can hand out to the residents that hopefully makes it a little bit easier for them to understand or obtain it off our website if that's what, how they choose to get it. Thanks for all your work, and I know it took a, took a lot of time to make it happen. So No problem. Any other questions? Mr. Go. So with that, I move to approve item 4E, ORD 2019-20, approval of ordinance 2019-20 for code amendments to the City of Smyrna Zoning Ordinance, Appendix A, Article 5, Sections 501 and 503 pertaining to fence requirements. I was in a second to approve these um, amendments. Any other discussion? All those in favor? It's approved six zero. Item five is previous licenses. We have none. Item six is formal business. A 2019-381. Approval, approve a bond resolution, bond purchase agreement, and related documents authorizing the issuance of its refunding tax allocation bond, Atlanta Road Corridor Project, Series 2019, and a principal amount of $12,725,000, and authorize the mayor or the mayor pro tem to execute all documents uh, incident thereto. Mr. <clears throat> Andrews, the background, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is uh, exciting news. So in 2003, when the Atlanta Road Corridor uh, Tax Allocation District was formed, uh, Cobb County assessed it at roughly $73.6 million. Today, uh, that stands at roughly $252 million. So this is exciting. So what that does is the, the success of this project uh, allows the city to refinance this at much more favorable terms. Uh, Mr. Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what Scott also failed to mention is that it saves the city a substantial amount of money and shortens the term of this, this bond payback. Um, do we want to call it Mr. Morton? Or do we need to? Mr. Morton. If you would give us a... Does he need... We need to swear him in, Scott? No, it's better here. If you would give us just a brief explanation a of the, camp, you don't have the benefits of this yeah, refinance. The, the, the benefits of this refinancing uh, flow both to the county and to the city because both of you, uh, the increment on the property created from the 73 million to the 250 million, and that's fair market value. Um, the assessed value is 100 million, 23 million, or 29 million to 101 million. Uh, the, the, the county shares in that because it has its <coughs> M&O millage uh, on the increment that contributes to this, and the city has the same, and it's about equal millage. But the city actually gains about uh, $2,900,000 in, in, 
savings, and the savings results from shortening the debt. Okay, so the debt, uh, if we didn't do anything, the, uh, the debt would be around to here probably 2039. Uh, by doing this, it's gonna shorten it to February, uh, if everything goes as planned, February of uh, 2032, which means the last tax increment that will be collected for these bonds will be tax year 2031. Uh, and that results in about, these are round numbers, but about $3 million to the city and about a million four hundred thousand roughly to the county. The reason the counties is less is their commitment to this funding only went through 2033. So where the cities went to 2039. So it's, uh, it's been a long time coming. Um, and the success of this TAD, uh, it's almost textbook case. Uh, for how it's supposed to work and how you putting a little public money into a project gets you from a Walmart, a super Walmart on that site down there, which was what was originally proposed by the developer to what you see today. Uh, and it's uh, pretty incredible and gets a lot of comments, positive comments from people visiting the city. Thank you. I felt very good about this before, but I, I just didn't want you sitting out there with nothing to do tonight. So, um, Mr. Mayor, I, I do support this. I, it, it, I won't say it sounds too good to be true, but it, it, it sounds very good. Uh, anytime we can save uh, approximately $3 million, it's a benefit to the city. With that, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 2019-381 to approve a bond resolution, bond purchase agreement, and related documents authorizing the issuance of its refunding tax allocation bond for the Atlanta Road Project Series 2019 in a principal amount of $12,725,000 and authorize the mayor or the mayor pro tem to execute all documents here in here incident there too. A motion is second to approve this bond resolution. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion. Approve six zero. Item six B under formal business ordinance twenty nineteen dash twenty one approval of ordinance twenty nineteen dash twenty one for proposed text amendments to the city of Smyrna Code of Ordinances Chapter six alcoholic beverage by amending Article one section six two and Article two section six thirty four six thirty seven six forty five. 6 46, 6 61, 6 62, 6 and adding section 682 related to the licensing of wineries. Uh, Mr. Andrews, the background, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a few minutes ago, you heard what staff has done. They had identified wineries and uh, went back like we did a year ago with breweries. So since that is now defined what staff then dug deeper is, this is the licensing of that. So community development has looked uh, at Cobb County, Marietta, and made sure they're competitive uh, with the surrounding areas and municipalities. And the code language here will uh, identify the licensing for wineries and community development moves approval. Uh, Mr. Tim Go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, appreciate that. Um, Russ, if you have any comments. Uh, yeah, a lot of these requirements track the brewery and distillery uh, amendments we made a year ago. Um, I can go through them real quick for you and just show you um, basically everywhere where we added a brewery. And, uh, we also added winery to be allowed in those sections. Um, there is one section, and I'll be really quick with this for you. Um, we added the definitions, then we added a type of license for winery. And then we dealt with um, adding wi wineries to this list of places that places limit limitations on uh, related package sales. We added wineries to those requirements, um, as well as um, these other sections that deal with um, drinking on premises and and um, <clears throat> package for carry out purposes. And then. We also added wineries to the subsection for that deals with the established hours of operation. 
as well as uh, Sunday sales. This is the section I really wanted you to see. This is the new section dealing with wineries. Subsection A, um, wineries shall be licensed by the state of Georgia and operate in accordance with all state laws and regulations. Uh, B, wineries may not sell any alcoholic beverage except wines that are produced at the facility or produced at other facilities owned by the same winery. And C, wineries may not hold a separate um, pouring license. And then we go to uh, section uh, 118, and that sets the distance requirements from certain uh, locations, such as your churches, public schools, um, residences, public parks, stuff like that. And then um, 124 uh, deals with uh, exempted li licenses for the pouring requirements. And finally, uh, in the next item you'll see is a establishment of the fees for uh, wineries and breweries. And this proposed amount will cover um, manufacturing, package sales, and tastings. So um, it'll all be encompassed at $1,700, which is um, comparable to, to um, other municipalities and also other um, alcoholic beverage licensees that we we issue within the within the city thanks Mayor. thanks i appreciate your group being uh flexible and nimble so to speak to help the business come to the city yeah and making, um, making reasonable adjustments to our ordinances to allow that to happen uh mr robin will be here next week for the formal um request for the alcohol license so he can proceed to um getting his state approvals um i think I think we've been working with him and we're, we've either issued building permits for him to do his improvements or we're really close to issuing those permits. So everything's working in the way that it should and hopefully he's satisfied with the way we handle business and, and he's happy to move here. So. Good, thanks Rusty. Time is money, Rusty. I understand. Um, so with that, I move to approve item uh, 5B, ORD 2019-21, approval of ordinance 2019-21. Oh, excuse me, sorry, item 6B. Yep. 6B, approval uh, of ordinance 2019-21 for proposed text amendments to the City of Smyrna's Code of Ordinances, Chapter 6, Alcohol, Beverage, by amending Article 1, Section 6-2, and Article 2, Sections 6-34, 6-37, 6-45, 6-46, 6-61, 6-62, 6-118, -6 and adding Section 6-82 related to the licensing of wineries. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, motion. Approve six zero. <clears throat> Item six C under formal business, twenty nineteen three seventy eight. Approval to amend uh, the city of Smyrna fee schedule uh, for community development for licenses to include a fee of seventeen hundred dollars for wineries and fee of seventeen hundred dollars for breweries. Uh, I think we just went Not through really that. Not really background there, sir. I'm going to turn this back over to Mr. Welch for council's approval. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm not going to bring Rusty up here for this. We just went we just went over it. Uh, this is simply a uh, a procedural issue where we're approving the fees for the wineries. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 6C, approval to amend the city of Smyrna fee schedule for community development for licenses to include a fee of $1,700 for wineries and a fee of $1,700 for breweries. Motion second to, to approve these fees. Um, and that's in line, Rusty. We're not way out there. Just yes or no. Just. No, sir. Uh, we're, I, we're not way out there. Okay. We're close. We're close to being way out there? 
<laughs> uh, we're, we're close to other municipalities. I apologize. All right. All right. A motion a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion. Approve six zero. Item six D. A twenty nineteen dash three eight zero is approval to amend the fee schedule to include an impound fee of one hundred dollars for the shareable mobility devices removed from the right of way and a five dollar a day fee storage. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about that, Scott? Sure. Many of the residents, or some of you, may have uh, even seen some of these scooters. Uh, they, they find their way to Smyrna, and they end up here. So what you see with these, the $100 impoundment fee and the $5 per day fee, those costs associated with the recovery um, will cover the cost of the officer collecting, transporting, and the time for the processing the scooter into evidence and the $5 a day for storage and paying for the space required. Uh, Mr. Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just as it reads that we're, we're simply trying to prevent uh, people and or companies from dropping off scooters in Smyrna um, and going against our ordinance. Uh, if they do, there will be a $100 um, impoundment fee plus $5 per day. I'll make a motion to approve item 6D. 2019-380 approval to amend the fee schedule to include an impoundment fee of $100 for a shareable mobility device removed from any right of way and a $5 per day fee for storage. A motion is second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion. It's approved 6-0. Item 6E, under formal business, 2019-367, approval of the 2020 employee insurance providers and plans and authorize the mayor to execute all related documents. Mr. Andrews. Thank you, Mayor. Every fall, the city reevaluates and selects its insurance plans and provides and providers for employee benefits such as medical, dental, vision, life, short-term and long-term disability, flex spending. Um, so this is just the city uh, offering to, wanting to make a recommendation to proceed with medical insurance, Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, dental and vision through Guardian, and life and short-term, long-term through MetLife. Uh, Ms. Black. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm sure we don't need to do any more discussing as we already have done and Kay um, Bullock, our HR director and staff have done a good job in making sure they vet and get the best um, insurance providers for us. So with that, I'm going to um, ask for approval of item 6E, 2019-367, approval of the 2020 employee insurance providers and plans, and authorize the mayor to execute all related documents. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion. It's approved 6 zero. Item 6F under formal business 2019-359. Approval to award RFP 19-009. Water sewer modifications for Windy Hill Boulevard to the lowest bidder. RDJE Inc. located at 6. 79 Highway 29 South Noonan, Georgia, 30263 in the amount of $4,276,185.50 uh, no, $4, to be funded from reduction in the FY 2020 water CIP transfer in from the Water and Sewer Fund 505 and use the water CIP r and &E fund balance and authorize the mayor to execute all related documents and amend the budget accordingly. Mr. Andrews, the background, please. Public Works requested bids for the 2016 SPLOS for Windy Hill Boulevard project, water and sewer modification improvements. Uh, 10 contractors purchased the bid plans. Uh, two bids were received. RDJE Inc. was the lowest 
and is the recommendation of Public Works purchasing and uh, engineering to move forward. Mr. Welch. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Frank, do you have anything additional to add to this? Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, th this is the, the first um, construction essentially in the, the Windy Hill project to, to remove and replace the existing water sewer along that roadway. I'm, I'm very happy to see it finally come before us. With that, I'll make a motion to approve item 6F, item 2019-359 for the approval to award RFP 19-009, water sewer modification for Windy Hill Boulevard to the lowest bidder, RDJE Inc., located at 679 Highway 29 South, Noonan, Georgia, 30263, in the amount of $4,276,185.50 to be funded from reductions in FY 2020 water CIP, transfers from water and sewer fund, 505, and the use of water CIP renewals and extensions fund balance and authorize the mayor to execute all related documents and amend the budget accordingly. Motion is second. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion. Let's approve 6 0. Item 6G, resolution 2019 05. Approved resolution 2019 05, a resolution of the city of Smyrna reminding restaurant owners of their ability to prohibit smoking. Mr. Uh, Andrews, the background. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Georgia legislature adopted the Georgia Smoke-Free Air Act in 2005. In 2014, the city of Smyrna, recognizing that prohibiting smoking within the city uh, was better for the health and safety welfare of residents. So what this does is remind restaurant owners, in fact, that they have the option to prohibit smoking. Uh, Mr. Corky Welch, who chairs the Finance and Administration. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm, I'm going to read this resolution um, just for the record. That's resolution 2019-05, a resolution of the city of Smyrna reminding restaurant owners of their ability to prohibit smoking. Whereas the Georgia legislature adopted the Georgia Smoke-Free Air Act of 2005, and whereas the state law specifically provides that owners of restaurants may declare the enclosed areas within the entire facility, as well as the outdoor area of the facility as non-smoking areas. And whereas in addition to the state law, in 2014, the city of Smyrna recognized that prohibiting smoking within city-owned facilities protects the health, safety, and welfare of the public adopted an ordinance prohibiting smoking within any indoor or outdoor public facility subject to certain exceptions. And whereas the result of the state and city laws has been to reduce the elim or eliminate smoking from most public areas and private businesses, including restaurants. However, a few restaurants have elected to either offer smoking areas or be designated as a location where smoking is allowed. Now, therefore, be it resolved that in addition, to, in, a, in an additional effort to better the health and welfare of the community, the mayor and council of the city of Smyrna do hereby remind all restaurant owners that they are legally able to prohibit smoking and encourage those who desire to prohibit smoking to do so immediately. Resolved by the mayor and council of the city of Smyrna, this the 12th day of October, 2019. Um, I'm sure, Corky, you're going to make a motion in a second. I'd just like to just add that um, uh, I think we've done a lot. The Georgia Smoke-Free Air Act of 2005 uh, allows all managers, proprietors, owners of restaurants and bars that if they don't want smoking, they could have cut it out. <laughs> Uh, 2005, that would be almost 15 years ago, is when this act was created. Um, and we have about five. All this is just to remind them that, hey, you have the ability. If you don't want smoking in your establishment, it's up to you. Um, and um, if they if they want to stop it, they can, they can stop it. Cork, are you going to make a motion? I'd like make... to say something before oh, we finish, Mayor, if I may. 
Um, I just want this to be on the record that I'm happy to see that the mayor, council, and city recognize in the form of a proclamation the overwhelming evidence that demonstrates that smoking bans protect the health, safety, and welfare of the public. This state law also gives local government the authority to be more restrictive. Giving this acknowledgement and the overwhelming evidence in the form of dozens of studies that prove smoking bans in public and private areas dramatically reduce health-related issues, I believe this should not be made a voluntary act through a proclamation, which does not carry the weight of an ordinance. We must act to protect, protect our residents, visitors, and their families from secondhand smoke. To limit this protection is to continue to put the health and safety of innocent restaurant workers, patrons, and their children at risk. We can make this proclamation a mandatory ban by simply changing a few words in paragraph five and making it an ordinance. And I would like to also make sure that it is entered into record this official position from the CDC that says, quote, exposure to secondhand smoke from burning tobacco products causes disease and premature death among non-smokers. There is no risk-free level of secondhand smoke and even brief exposure can cause immediate harm. Studies have shown that smoke-free laws that prohibit smoking in public places like bars and restaurants help improve the health of workers and the general population. And some of these improvements in health outcomes, such as, such as reductions in hospital admissions and, for heart, and heart attacks, began to realize shortly after the laws take effect. Again, this law also gives local government the authority to be more restrictive and cities like Atlanta, Savannah, Athens, Snellville, Gainville, um, Morrow, all have the welfare of their community at hand. And furthermore, if we can pass T21 to protect the health and welfare of our students, I think we should be able to do the same with a non-smoking ban. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. Webb. Excuse me. Go ahead. Mr. Maker, I'd like to make a motion to approve item 6G, resolution 2019-05, for the approval of resolution 2019-05, a resolution of the city of Smyrna, reminding restaurant owners of their ability to prohibit smoking. Second. Got a motion to second. I, I, I just want to add this to your discussion. Uh, July 19th of 2018, I appointed a Clean Air Ordinance Review Committee chaired by Corky Welch, Andrew Bluestein, and Ron Fennell, who went over our ordinance to state law, and they came back with a recommendation that basically the state law allows proprietors and managers, everyone, and, and I'm gonna name them, Atkins Park, the Tavern, Timbers, Docks, and, and did I say barners? I say barners. And maybe uh, I'm not sure about um, the, um, the moose lodge, whether or not they allow smoking or not. They can stop the smoking right now. All I got to do is say no, no more smoking. And they won't do it. Uh, other restaurants have. Um, but we have got uh, state law that will allow them to do it. So I would, I would hope that everyone would would support this uh, this ordinance. Uh, we got a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of the motion. That's approved five to one with Ms. Blackburn opposing the resolution. Um, item H, 6H, 2019-397, approval of Ward 5 appointment to the Parks and Recreation Commission, Kama Mayan. This is a two-year term that expires December 20, 2021. Ms. Wilkinson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, at this time, I would like to move to approve item 6H, approval of Ward 5 appointment to the Parks and Recreation Commission, Kamamanyan. 
to your term to expire December 2021. Motion a second. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion. Approve six zero. Item um, I six I twenty nineteen three seventy five. Approval to abandon a small strip of land consisting of zero point zero one eight five acres adjacent to Windsor subdivision on Fontaine Road in the east west connector that is no longer needed for surface water drainage and convey whatever interest the city has in their property to the adjacent owner. Weekly Homes, LLC. Uh, the background, Mr. Andrews. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, you pretty much covered the entire background here with the agenda title. Uh, again, this is 0 .0185 acres, and this will just be uh, deeded to David Weekly Homes. So that is the Mr. agenda Welch, covers it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, this was a, a small strip of land that ran perpendicular to Fontaine Road. It was at one point a drainage easement. Um, and has become obsolete or is no longer needed. Um, with that, I'll make a motion to approve item 6I, 2019-375, for the approval to abandon a small strip of land consisting of 0 0.0185 acres adjacent to Windsor subdivision on Fontaine Road and the east-west connector that is no longer needed for surface water drainage and convey whatever interest the city has in the property to the adjacent property owner Weekly Homes, LLC. I have a motion to second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion. Let's approve 6 zero. Item J, 2019-384, approval for the city to paint no parking on curbs in Cooper Lake, place neighborhood um. thank you mayor uh, two areas of cooper lake place have been designated as no parking by the hoa board <clears throat> these areas create a blind spot for oncoming vehicles and cause safety situations for those traveling in the area the cooper lake place board of directors has requested that the city paint no parking on the curbs in these areas mr welch thank you mr mayor some months back, I received a petition from the HOA at uh, Cooper Lake Place requesting that they be allowed to designate um, their, their curbs within the development as, as no parking. With the stipulation that, that they do this using painting on the curbs um, instead of uh, signage, um, I worked with the city attorney on this issue uh, to determine if this could be enforced. Uh, he ruled back to, to us as a council that this could be enforced by the police department. Um, and, uh, you know, it, we we have a petition on file. I think there's some, I don't want to say 30 some odd names on the petition. Um, with that, Mr. Mayor, I'd make a motion to approve item 6J2019-384 for the approval for the city to paint no parking on curbs in Cooper Lake Place neighborhood. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion. Approve six zero. Item seven is commercial building permits. We have none. Item eight is consent agenda. Mr. Andrews, will you please read the consent agenda for council's approval? Yes, sir, thank you. Item 8A, 2019-368, the approval of the October 7, 2019 Mayor and Council meeting minutes. Item B, 2019-369, approval of the October 7, 2019 pre-council <coughs> meeting minutes. Item C, 2019-361, approval of the October 3rd, 2019 Committee of the Whole meeting minutes. Item D, 2019-371, approval for Atkins Park Tavern to extend premises for the Smyrna Oyster Fest January 24th, January 25th, January 26th of 2020 during hours of operation. Item E, 2019-391, 
Approval to allow a road closure along Manson Avenue on November 3rd, 2019, between the hours of 3.45 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. for neighborhood chili cook-off and fun run. Your motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. All those in favor of the motion. It's approved 6-0. Item 9, committee reports. We'll start tonight with uh, Mr. Derek Norton. I have no report this evening, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Andrea Bluestein. Uh, your Mayor, I don't have any report this evening. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Marilyn Blackburn. I don't have any reports, uh, Mayor, but I do want to say um, congratulations to our Parks and Recreation um, for an incredible event on Saturday for the opening of the, the new bike park. It is really cool, and say thank you to the Jonquil Kiwanis Club for um, the free helmets that they were giving away, or bike helmets they were giving away. So if you have not had an opportunity to go out and visit the bike park, please do. It is a lot of fun. And with that, I yield. Mr. Corky Welch. I have no reports, but I would like to mirror what Ms. Blackburn said regarding the event on Saturday. It was a lot of fun despite the rainfall. And I'd challenge any council person to run that little children's course out there with me and on a time basis. So with that, I yield. Ms. Uh, Susan Wilkins. Yes, um, I was out there on Saturday too. It's a really cool park and I encourage everyone to go check it out. And I'll take Corky up on that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, also I would like to um, tell about the library news. The library's youth services department will hold a fall festival for children aged three to seven on Thursday, <coughs> October 24th. The festival is a drop-in event and will be in the library's meeting room from 3 to 5 p.m. Participants will be, will make, I'm sorry, Halloween crafts, pin the bow tie to the Mr. Bones, and much more. So, and with that, I yield. Stem Goo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Got a couple of quick things. Um, first, um, Forest Hills um, residents, a uh, group of them got together to form the Forest Hills Traffic Committee, and we had a meeting a week or so ago. And really, the main goal is to try to highlight some potential safety improvements. And they just, like like all our citizens, want to keep their neighborhoods safe and their streets safe and all that. So really thank them for their time and, and uh, effort. Um, Friday night was a homecoming at Campbell High School, and uh, it was a fun event, beautiful, beautiful night. And uh, the mayor received a couple nice awards. Uh, I guess his letterman's jacket, probably not his first one, but the newest one. And uh, it, it looked great, fits well. Um, and uh, it also was honored at midfield with, I think, a, a, a jersey and even a Spartan helmet, if I remember that right. So it, it a, looks it like a fit. It was a big helmet, I know that. <laughs> So it was a um, yeah, it was a great night. A lot of a lot of fan excitement, and uh, I think we'll get them next year on the on the football field. But uh, that, with that, Mr. Mayor, I yield. Thanks, right. Mr. Scott Andrews. Anything? Just want to give credit to community development for uh, I know the legwork that went into everything you did tonight. So great job, Mr. Cock. No sir, Ms. Graham. Yes, sir. I'd like to um, let everyone know that we are we have been voting for one week for advanced voting at our main office in Cobb County. We have one more this week is also available for advanced voting from um, on Monday through Friday, eight to five. And then next week at the Smyrna Community Center, we will be having early voting October the 28th through November the 1st. And then no voting on Monday and election day is November the 5th. Come out and vote. Thank you. Ms. Tina, anything? Okay. Mr. Welch, you got some? One reminder, um, Marilyn reminded me of this, the Jonquil Festival is coming up on 26 and 27. So everybody out there, um, please come visit us. It's a lot of fun, a lot of, a lot of crafts and food to eat and come out to the city and enjoy it. Yep. Um, we do not have a show cause hearing. We got two people signed up. Citizens input Susan Wilkinson or 2805 Stone Creek Road re-election is her top. Hi, my name's Susan Wilkinson. I live at 
2805 Stone Creek Road in Smyrna. I've lived there for 33 years, and I've been serving for two terms on the city council for the city of Smyrna for Ward 5. And um, tonight, I'd like to talk about um, a few things that have, I've worked on since I've been on the council. When I first came in, um, on the, into office to serve on the council, uh, we were in a recession, and um, that was in 2012. And uh, the, the city council that served before me had made a decision to purchase 48-acre apartment complex that was in Ward 5. And the city was in the process of demolishing 95 buildings with approximately 730-plus units in this apartment complex. And so the council was faced with what do we do with the property? And um, one of the, um, it was empty for a couple of years, I think, uh, during that recession. And I know at one time it came before us that a large retail chain was interested in the property. And, um, and there was a lot of pressure to have that happen there. But um, I was very, um, I spoke up, I was a loud voice for the citizens of uh, Ward 5, and I was opposed to um, that particular retailer coming into that spot. Um, I was not um, opposed to the retailer coming into a, another blighted, existing, older, closed down shopping center, but I did object to them coming in at that location. And the reason I objected is because I felt like that was not the right use um, to improve or stabilize the surrounding neighborhoods that are existing there in Ward 5. I was a strong voice at that time for the citizens of Ward 5 and the neighborhoods around that community. As a result, at that time, the mayor appointed a task force to come up with the best solution for that location, and I served on that board. Um, we concluded... Uh, the residential. You just bumped it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anyway, so we came up uh, with the 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 fact that uh, we felt that um, residential would be the best use uh, for a halo effect for the surrounding area. Um, Following that, during that time, the city had three residential proposals, and two of them were more, much more dense than the one that we chose, and we ended up choosing the one that is now 193 or 94 single-family homes on the property in Ward 5. Um, it's, um, um, so when we were discussing the proposed development and its potential halo effect, um, the... De the developer was planning to have the main interest on Windy Hill Road. I recommended that uh, for the best halo effect that for the surrounding neighborhood, it would be best that it was the in main entrance was on Old Concord, and they took me up on that, and it, the main entrance is now on Old Concord. I also said, uh, recommended um, soon after that that we put in a... Um, a road from South Cobb Drive at the existing light through to Old Concord to help with the organization of the traffic that was uh, the chaos that was through this sea of asphalt there and also um, help with the pedestrians and um, the the staff and the city agreed to put the road in with the sidewalks that makes it much safer for pedestrians and vehicles that are traveling from um, South Cobb Drive to Old Concord in that um, area. And I think that's also added um, a big plus to that, to uh, Ward 5. So um, try to be fast here. <laughs> um, yeah, that the right. community was chosen as a 2016 community of the year, and it's proved to be a great uh, asset for that part of Smyrna. I can, can uh, I support the continued revitalization of Ward Five, especially the South Cobb uh, Drive corridor, and the continue, con continued connectivity of Smyrna's multi-use trails on this side of the city and Ward Five. And I'll push to make these projects a priority in the upcoming SPLOS referendum. For more information, visit my website at susanforsmyrna5.com. And uh, please make sure you vote on the 5th. But thank you. Marilyn Blackburn, Huntington Trace, re-election.
Good evening, Mayor and Council. I promise I will not use all three minutes. I am Marilyn Blackburn. I am the current City Council representative for Ward 3, and I've lived in Smyrna for 19 years, where I have definitely enjoyed spending my time here. But I'm running and I'm up for re-election for the Smyrna City Council uh, Ward 3 because I care. And I care about environmental stewardship. I believe that we must work um, with our federal, state, and local environmental protection agencies to ensure that our citizens um, are protected via air, water, and um, soil. Talking about economic, de economic development, we must diversify our revenue sources by recruiting businesses that hire locally, pay competitively wages, and are environmental stewards. We can talk about transportation and transit all day long, but we have to be able to work with our county, state, and federal partners when critical infrastructure, deci infrastructure decisions are being made. And it's important that we do look at transit for Smyrna with our city growing as rapidly as it is. The safety of our citizens is always very important, so it's, in, it, it's very important that our first responders are um, being paid well and trained and equipped to do their job right here in Smyrna as well. Inclusive government, Smyrna's government must reflect the community it serves. I mean, all voices should be heard, and we have to be able to uh, embrace our diversity here. So I ask you to visit votemarylineblackburn.com for additional information on all the wonderful accomplishments that I have done since I have been your Smyrna City Council representative for Ward 3 and look forward to serving an additional four years. Thank you and God bless. Uh, that concludes the list of folks that um, signed up. So if there's no other bids to be brought for this body, I clear some meeting adjourned at 9.06. Thank you.